Dobro jutro, draga braćo i sestre. U crkvi St. Albans. Mi se nalazimo daleko od vas u New South Wales, gdje nam je mnogo lakše nego kako što čujemo vama još ne možete zajedno da se sastanete u vašim u crkvi. Ali evo, velika mi je prednost da na ovaj način vam poslužim. I posebno sam zahvalan pastoru vaše crkve um, koji me, kako se kaže, koji me pozvao da, da držim propovjed. I to će mi biti čast. Nažalost, naš jezik mi ne teče tako brzo i tako dobro kao što je nekad bilo i zato na, englišću, na engleski će da govorim, a znam da svi skoro razumijete Jako dobro. I'm really finding it uh, hard to believe that you have been under lockdown for so long down in Melbourne. And we have family in Melbourne. My son and his wife is down there. We can't see them. And so is our daughter and her husband and a little granddaughter. We can't see them. So we empathize with you and I know you empathize with us. But uh, there are, I know that if I was now looking across the congregation, there would be a lot of people that I probably could remember and know. And so hearty Christian God-sent greetings go to every one of you. And I pressed, pray that one day we will be able to meet and, and see each other in person and you will begin to live a bit of a normal life that you deserve so much. And I trust that you are all doing well with this COVID-19. None of you are drastically affected. You know, it's been in the news again and again that so many people are affected mentally and emotionally through this. Mental health is a huge issue. And I would just like to talk with you and share with you from God's Word one big secret for Christian mental health. You know, I'm from the country that you come from two, from former Yugoslavia. I was born in, in Zagreb. And uh, I went to the school there for five years in the time of the communist regime. And I never forget when I left, uh, when, when I experienced my hardships. I will never forget when my communist teacher would stand in front of the class and pick me out and embarrass me, bring me to the front and, and have me explain where I was on Saturday. Because everyone is in school and I was in church. And he used to do that week in, week out. Month after month, he was really wearing me out as a, as a young boy. I still remember one year when the school was finishing and the students and teachers had a time together that he, in front of all the parents, went out and, and threatened my dad, saying that we must, in the year to come, after the school holidays, summer holidays, when the new year begins, we must change our ways. He said to my dad, while I was sitting next to him, he threatened him, he said, you will have your son attend this school. If not, I will send him to the school for the handicapped children, and you will be imprisoned. And I looked at my dad in fear. I said, Dad, what are we going to do? And Dad just looked at me with a calm smile, put his hand on me and said, we'll be okay. Do you know, I've never prayed so much as a little boy as I did that summer, fearful of what the new year would bring. And I can still remember that first day of school in the following year, dreading to see my teacher, but, and, 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 and looking to the door, you know, there was the bell that rang and all the kids went silent. I mean, we were expecting this teacher of mine who looked tall with black moustache and so daunting. We looked at the door, but nothing, nobody came. And then kids started talking. And then bell rang again. We all went quiet. And now the teacher appeared. But I can tell you, I, I was terrified. The only thing that sort of made me 
ease a little bit. When I realized it wasn't a man, it was a, a woman. I knew he was a man. This is a woman. She came in. She stood in front of the class. She said, girls and boys, I will be your teacher for the new year. Your teacher from last year has been taken seriously ill. He has taken down to the seaside for treatment, and I will be your teacher. Well, I can tell you that I was flabbergasted. I was amazed how God had answered my prayer. He saved me from whatever the threats the teacher from the year before gave me. But what stands out more to me than anything is this amazing calm and a smile that my dad had. He says, it will be okay. It is from that history of my life that I have been touched by the amazing life of my parents, who in the midst of crisis seem to have some kind of a calmness, a sweetness, and a joy, a joy despite the circumstances. In fact, it's been said that the shortest verse in the Bible is in John 11, 35, 35 which says, Jesus wept. But actually, when you go down into the Greek, you discover that isn't the shortest text. In fact, in Greek, it says, Adakrusen ho Jesus. Three words. So it's not the shortest verse in the Bible. But it, the one that is the shortest is found here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, Rejoice always. The Greek, Pantote hairete. There you go. The shortest verse in the Bible is not about sadness, but about joy. And it says, be joyful always. The question that I have for you this morning, and I have for myself just as much, is how is your mental health? Are you being snowed under with what's happening, not just with the society and the COVID, but also with issues in your life and my life? I have been moved again and again to come to this passage found in Scripture, passage in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 1, 6, and 10. And I'm reading here from New Living Translation. It is a paraphrase, but it's quite good. And here I'm touched by the whole scenario. We have Jews returning back to Babylon. They have just, re I'm sorry, Jews returning back to Jerusalem having been in Babylon for a long time, 70 years or more. And now they have finally, under stress and strain, rebuilt the walls, rebuilt the temple. And Nehemiah, their leader, brought them together for celebration. And I read in verse 1, Nehemiah 8, verse 1, it says, In October, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled with a unified purpose, at the square, just inside the water gate. And they asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel to obey. And then it goes further down, and we come to verse 6, it says, Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen. Amen, as they lifted their hands. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. What a worship. What a celebration. What a joy. And then we come further down to verse 10, and Nehemiah continued. Go, he says, and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's my point this morning. 
That's the only thing that I would like to read to you, to talk to you about, and I pray the Holy Spirit will be touching your heart and answering all your needs. Because the joy of the Lord is to be our strength. Joy? What is joy? Well, we know very quickly what joy is. Joy is happiness, contentment. But here it's telling us that it's not our joy to be our joy. It is not the circumstantial joy to be our joy. It is to be the joy of the Lord. His something that we have to do with Him that brings joy to us, that God intends to be the source and the base and the foundation of all our joy. You know, when I was a teenager, I was on the journey of discovery of life, as all of you have been at one stage. And I still remember trying to boost myself up and have a good day. So I'd put my little radio next to my bed. And the first thing I would do, my first transistor radio that I purchased, I put, there, put it there by my bed. And in the morning when I woke up, I just nicely turned it on and had some amazing music. What a way to start the day. And then, you see, as I went through the day, I suddenly found myself singing a certain song. And I would sing it, it would just come to me around 8 o'clock, then around 10, then about 12, then about 2, 4, even till the very evening. The same tune kept coming. And I used to say to myself back then, I remember, why am I singing this song? Why is this constantly coming my way? And then it dawned on me. It was the song, the first song that was played on the radio that morning. That song decided my mood for the day. And as I went through life later on, I discovered that I had control, more of a control of my joy than the radio. You know, God wants us to be happy. Life is full of joy anyway. Why do we need this extra outside joy? I mean, isn't life full of things like, um, you know, feeling good after you've been promoted in a job? Isn't there something amazing when uh, you have just witnessed your team, your football team, win? <laughs> Remember joy. Remember the shoutings? Remember the celebrations? Remember when you went to the holiday cruising around the world? We've never done it, but we've heard of people and doing it, and many of them have spoken to us, glowing with such a claim that this has been an amazing journey, worth doing it again. Always entertained, never having to cook, Sleeping in, sleeping out, seeing places everywhere. Isn't that just as good as anything? I remember when I was, again, going back to my younger days, my first kiss. My wife's watching now. But I was so excited. It was such a thrill. Actually, I thought that I should marry that girl straight away. There was something so empowering and so satisfying. Where did that come from? Remember your wedding day and the amazing time you had over there. Remember the joy of a happy marriage where you constantly find deep satisfactions and empowerment? Remember the birth of your child? The joy that there was when you saw that little one smiling at you, laughing at you? Remember the holding of that child in your hand? Or is it grandchild now for you? constantly thinking, dreaming, when will we go and see them? Oh, the COVID is stopping us. We're looking at the date when the, day, the, the, band, the borders will open so we can get through to the other side and see them. Remember, don't you know, can't we all experience that? My little granddaughter over there in, in Brisbane sent me a little SMS and she said, Deda, I love you. Well, I can tell you that was the glorious feeling. 
And there's so many other joys. The joy of a flower, joy of a beautiful day, joy of having a body still functioning reasonably well, the joy of friendship, the joy of seeing each other in church one day, the joy of eating a beautiful... Joy, joy, joy everywhere. But when I look at all those joys, I sense that they still ultimately trace their way back to God. It is He who gave them to us for enjoyment here on this earth. Is there a better joy? Is there a better way? Is there a better, is there a better kind of a joy? Is there an ultimate joy in quality, in type, that is supreme above all those amazing, wonderful, God-given joys? And this morning, I'm here to tell you, because many of you have already known that joy. Some of you may have just lost it along the way, and you don't know how to get it back. Some of you have never known it, and I'd like to introduce it to you. It is a joy of a heavenly kind. It is called the joy of the Lord. It is His joy. When appropriated into your life, that it can make a huge difference. Not the joy that comes from transistor radio, but the joy that comes from the Word of God in a humble, prayerful attitude, seeking God to speak to our hearts, that living connection with God in that privacy of your soul between him and you. And I trust this morning I am a channel of that grace, of that Holy Spirit speaking to you right now so that you will hear his voice telling you, you can have that joy today, now, for the first time, again. Come with me here into this amazing psalm, Psalm 41 to 3. Psalm Psalm chapter 40, the 40th Psalm. Psalm 40. 1 to 3. Here it is. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. David speaks. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and mire, and he set my feet on solid ground. He steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord. There is room for a new song in your heart. David experienced it. He rejoiced. He says, others looked and they were amazed. God had put a new song, and it is my prayer that God will put a new song on your lips. Not the one that the radio has put on. Not the one that the earth offers. Yes, we must enjoy and we can only truly enjoy the joys of this world. The good joys, the healthy joys. But it is only as God's joy reigns in your heart. When his song vibrates and echoes through the chambers of your soul. You know, I, I, like you, have been on the journey of discovery, as I've already said. And when I was a teenager in New Zealand, I saw at then, you know, I was a I was teenager, I, I was not even 20 yet, and I saw in a pastor, an old pastor in his late 70s, touch me. You know, we often re write off these old people. We say, you know, they are for the nursing home. It's, it's a very, very sad way at looking at each other. You don't know what treasure there hides in an old age. This pastor in his late 70s touched me, first of all, by the energy which he had. 
He would walk, his name was Pastor Alfred J. Kranz, and I will never forget him because God put him in my path at that time at Longburn College in New Zealand many years ago when we left former Croatia, uh, Croatia or former Yugoslavia there and migrated to New Zealand. And that speed with which he walked down the corridor and then the, 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 the glow in his eyes. He, I actually took a class from him. I said, Pastor Kranz, I want to listen to you teach us about the Bible. And he would come, you know, always to the class with that zest and energy. And one day he walked in and he said, I've just seen the grace of God. And I thought to myself in my young mind, what has this man seen now? Grace of God. I've heard of grace of God. It doesn't mean anything. So they asked him, what did you see? He saw these, I said, I saw these flowers blossoming just outside the window of our classroom. And he says, aren't they amazing? He says, the fragrance, the colors, that's God's gift to us to enjoy. I can tell you, those flowers looked different when I walked out of that classroom that day. He says, they are the grace of God. I was moved by his behavior. He would, he would uh, always um, have something to say about the meaning of life. Still, you know, we were always focused on cars as those teenagers. He would drive, change his car frequently. Every car had a different color and brightly different color. One was black, the other one was yellow, the other one was green, the other one was red, the other one was white. And he went through all these cars and we asked him, Pastor Corinth, why do you change colors of your cars so often? He says, because I love beauty. <laughs> I mean, you know, at that age, to be so full of love with life made me question what was the source of his joy. And I found it because he told us again and again how much he was in love with Jesus. And he said it happened when he looked at the picture of a crucified Lord. He says, the crown of thorns on his head, he said, when I was a young man, that moved me. And it's ever since I've been looking at the cross and I find that it is the only source of true joy. Later on, I heard young people talk about Jesus being with us. I heard them in the corridor talking. And one lady, I still remember, yeah, a girl, she says, I have the presence of Jesus with me. I actually practice the presence of Jesus. She says, wherever I go, he's with me. I can see him there. I, I know that I can't see many things in life, but why should my eyes see him? All I need to do is believe he's with me. She says, I go to a car and I drive and I know he's sitting with me in the car and I talk to him. You know, all these things were giving birth into my soul, giving birth to Jesus, giving birth to his joy in my heart. When I began to believe that Jesus is with me, when I began to see the beauty of life around me, I can tell you that I was looking at life with a different set of glasses. When Jesus comes into your heart and you believe that he is with you and he is the source of everything, you can't help but see the world in a different way. And I found that the, the world that I saw through his glasses had richer colors, deeper, more sweeter smells. He had more vibrancy in life. And then later, as I went through life, I gave myself totally to Jesus. I was baptized, and then went and studied for ministry. And then through ministry, I went through up and down. Oh, I've been through some tough times in life, as you have too. But let me say, I found and found this passage in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 18. Very uplifting. Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 18. Come with me. Chapter 6, and verse 18. It says, God has given both his promise and his oath to us. These things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. 
Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Do you see the beauty and the power of this text? Here we have something that the writer, Apostle Paul, calls the anchor to the soul, like a ship. Stable in the port can be stable only when it's firmly anchored. So your joy is firmly anchored when it's anchored in Jesus and his death for you. When you know that you are forgiven because of Jesus' death on the cross, because of his broken body for you, because of his shed blood for you, you can be sure that you are a forgiven sinner who has now become the child of God, who by prayer can enter directly through the curtain that was now torn because Jesus was, uh, was, was crucified and the temple curtain was, was torn, symbolizing the direct access that we now have to the very throne room of God as we speak. God is listening and you are in his audience and I am in his audience. Isn't there a no greater joy? And then on top of that, Jesus, after his resurrection, gave us his Holy Spirit, that invisible presence of a person of God in our life to be a paracletos alongside us, inside us, helping us to see the realities of God, convicting us that we are loved, that we are cared for, that we are the children of God. Look, you cannot help but have an extra measure of divine joy when such revelations are given to you. And I pray that you will take this book every morning, early in the morning, before you turn your transistor on. And let the joy of the Lord fill your soul. It is only there and then that the tone of that music, the tone of that relationship, will set the tone for the day. And you will find yourself at 8 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, at 1 o'clock, being grateful to Jesus for having given you his song to be in your heart. Can this priceless jewel of joy be maintained? Or can we lose it? Years ago, I worked in Iceland when I was a student studying at Newbold College. I was selling Christian books. I still remember one day I was going on my own, going through the countryside with huge volcanoes on either side, no trees, no houses. Just gravel road. I had a Morris, a little Morris car from England, a little post, postal car. It, it had, um, it, it was an old car loaded with heavy books. A green little thing that went down the road, those country, uh, those country roads, again for miles and for hours with no one, no one present. And one day as I was going and driving and singing my songs, because Jesus had helped me sell some books. I was going to this other town, just looking around, driving. The road was straight. Now everything was just, the sun was shining. The day was beautiful. And then suddenly I saw myself. I felt myself flying downwards. Not, I had not turned away from the road. I had not slipped from the road. There just was no road. The road disappeared. I was going straight. It just disappeared about a meter down. And the car was going through the air. And, then it, and as it was going down, I, I knew this is going to be a break of the car into two. There would be no... Th th I, I'm done. Would you believe as I fell down, the books came all on top of me. I managed to push them back. I crawled out of that car to look underneath, hoping and praying that the worst did not happen. And the worst did not happen. The chassis was still intact. That car did not break down. I made it, but there was a downward drop. Thank God for that. Christian life, Christian joy has its ups and downs, just like I had one. But that does not mean that there is a no way up. They say Christian falls seven times. 
and seven times he rises up. The Bible gives us direction and encouragement. Apostle Paul says these words here in Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Come with me to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, it says, And now, just as you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in truth that you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness or gratitude. And nobody who is grateful cannot sing. So, just as you've accepted Jesus, continue to walk in him. You know, um, there in the industry, I've heard, there in the, in the industry, I think it's in India, where, where they make some of the embroidery um, for royalty. Embroidery that has very thin threads of gold. Uh, they make this, these, these cloths, this fabric, with this fine gold in it, this way. I was told, they take a block of, of silver about one meter long and a ten centimeters high and wide. They gold plate it. They put it in a machine. So you've got a meter, block, a meter long block of, of silver, gold plated around, put into a special machine which then begins to pull it out, stretch it out, and reduce it to a very tiny wire to the level of being a fine thread. And by stretching that one meter block of silver and gold, gold in a small proportion to gold, to silver, they can stretch it 2,000 kilometers. Unbelievable. That fine thread lasting, going all that way in the same proportion of gold to the silver as it started in this huge block. That's how they get these threads into the fabric. And God knows that you want his joy. You need his joy. You need his contempt, contentment. You need that calm and trusting joy, because joy is much more than just laughing. True joy is true peace, true contentment. And just, as, just like that gold had stretched its way down 2,000 kilometers, God wants you to enjoy his joy for the rest of your life. So just as you have received Christ, so continue to live in him. You say, but... I am struggling. Yes, so are we all. But don't forget, you've got three significant persons who are cheering you on, who are sponsors for your happiness. First one is the Father, second is the Son, and the third one is the Holy Spirit. And let me just assure you with words from Scripture about these individuals. The Father in Isaiah 41 and verse 10 Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Listen to the Father speaking. He says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my precious right hand. Can you go wrong with the Father? Then you've got the Son in Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Listen to this. 8.35. Can anything ever separate us from the Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. No, verse 37, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. In King James Version says, we are more than conquerors. Can you go wrong with Jesus on your side? And then the Holy Spirit over here is your sponsor. Romans 8, 9 to 11. It says, but you are controlled not by your sinful nature, 
You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. In verse 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, He will give your mortal bodies this same Spirit living with you even now. Do your mortal bodies need some life? Doesn't your being as you have it right now need some stirring, some flame, God's flame burning brighter, hotter? Is there room for the joy of God to be part of your life? You've got all the whole heaven working on your behalf. Heavenly kind of joy is the best. The only kind of quality, true quality, is the joy from the Lord. Will you indulge in this joy more than in all the other joys that we all tend to enjoy in? Yes, we do have so many distractions that take our attention and we find thrill in them. But do we give God a chance to give us His joy? Will you fill your heart early? I am tempted to read this verse, and I will read it before I finish. And it's found here in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Zephaniah 3, 17. For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With His love, He will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful song. And in another version, King James says he will, uh, he will rejoice in you with singing. Do you know that it's not only God, you who needs joy, God himself expresses his joy towards you with singing. God sings over you. He sheds his music over you because he loves you. He serenades you. Do you believe it? You're not dejected, rejected, forgotten. You're a child of God. And God sings over you because He loves you. And if you and I can indulge in this kind of thinking, let the Spirit write God's joy within our soul, we will all enjoy the top mental health that this world is craving for but cannot have. May the joy of the Lord, brothers and sisters in St. Albert's Church, may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. Amen.